Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and today we are painting X-Men's Hank McCoy, or otherwise known as Beast. I am really excited to get started on this project today because this model was printed on my new Epax E10 8K resin printer, and the quality on this is astounding because there are so many little cracks and crevices to really just pop. And this model is actually from Sanix. And I will go ahead and put a link to where you can get his stuff in the description. So let's not waste any more time and let's get into painting this beast. So I have this assembled with poster tack and then I got a base coat of black primer and here I'm actually doing a zenithal highlight, which is just using some white ink and hitting it with my airbrush from the top only to be able to get a light source. Okay, so now I have the zenithal highlight all over this, so you can see it's white and then dark. And that is going to help us in this next step. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing more of a stippling dry brush. And I'm going to be using this, this shape of my dry brush. And what I'm going to use is this Midnight. Um, it is a dark, dark blue. And I'm going to be doing this from all from the bottom to start getting some of my shading first. And then we're going to be working on the highlights of the fur. And that's all I'm working on right now is just the fur because there is a lot to do and it's going to be very messy. And after we're done with that, then we can start on the actual like suit. All right, so here we go. And I'm going to start with the legs first and test it out here. Not too much. Good. And I'm basically just kind of jabbing it and stippling it from this direction because I'm trying to get underneath these hairs. So under these ridges right here. And then we still have some of our zenithal highlight. All right, so this is such a dark blue, it almost still looks black, and that is what I'm wanting. I'm wanting just those shadows to have like a blue tinge to it. So you can see that I still have that highlight. I haven't gotten rid of all of it, and that's what I'm wanting. So now when I go move to my next step, I'm going to be able to really take advantage of some of this light here. The big thing of like having the zenithal highlight that I find helpful, if I don't fully assemble my models when I paint them, I know exactly where I need to paint. So I'm not constantly seeing like, am I getting the right angle? I know that that highlight is really where I want to focus on all of my lighter colors and I know underneath is where I want to do all of my darker colors. So if you're not pre-assembling your models and then painting them fully assembled, this is a great way if you're using light sources. If you're just painting it all like a flat color with no real light source, you don't really need a zenithal highlight, but this is just one of those extra things to help you with getting your right lighting. So now I'm using a navy blue and this is very dark, but we're really starting to bring out some of the blue. So we were really focused on the really dark, dark blue. Now this is just a dark blue, I guess. And this is where I'm gonna really start to bridge the gap between the really dark and the light. So this is kind of my lower middle tone. 
And I'm still using a dry brush technique, but all I'm doing is I'm very lightly in very short strokes with my dry brush and getting a lot of the pigment off. I'm kind of bridging the edge of the shadows where the light source is starting. And that is really just to bring out the blue a little more. So you can see we're really starting to get some blue in there now. So you can see how I'm really starting to bring it towards the white closer with this shading closer to it and I'm starting to overlap a little bit of the white and it's really starting to bring out the muscles and that is the whole point of this. All right, now I'm using Admiral Blue. So this is a more vivid blue, but still a dark blue. So I'm basically building up these tones. So now I'm coming closer and I'm going to be overlapping the white a little more. And I'm going to switch to a more controlled dry brush. And when it gets to the dark areas, I'm no longer going up. I'm only coming down to hit those raised edges of the fur. All right, now I'm going to use True Blue for my next gradation. So you can see I'm almost covering my white and you can really start to see how this gradation has really just brought out some of those darker spots and it's also really accentuating a lot of the fur. And now I'm just dragging it across the tops and some of the darker spots to really just bring out some of that tufts of fur. So you can see there, we really got some good gradations and you can see the accentuation of the muscles. All right, now I'm going to use this blue kazoo and this is going to be my highlights. So just going to need a little bit on this one. So this is where I'm really going to focus on where my light source was. So where I had a lot of this Admiral blue on there. I noticed this brush is a little too focused. So what I'm gonna do is I am actually going to switch to a more broad brush to where I can kind of just easily dust this. Now I'm going to this last blue, which is going to be my light blue. And this is going to be a very, very light dusting. And you see how I'm holding my brush. I'm basically just dragging it across the model to really just pick up all of those little tiny hairs and give some accentuation to it. And I'm wanting a little more on the face just because of, uh, I want to give a little more texture on the actual head itself. So I'm not really focusing on light source here. I'm focusing on definition of all of the hair. You can see that. 
You got a lot of great texture in that. So you can see. Oh, so you can see there we got a lot more. And to kind of bring it together, I'm going to hit this a little harder just on the shoulders. Just to kind of bring that together. There we go. Okay, so the fur is pretty much done, I would say. Now what I want to do is work on the actual skin. So the skin on his face, then the skin on the palms and like say the bottoms of the feet and the toes. All right, now I'm going to use this deep blue from the Army Painters. All right, so I'm using a gloss black for the claws. Once I started really looking at this beast and seeing how bright his fur was, I really wasn't happy with that pale blue. So I made the decision to kind of dim that down a bit. So I went with that blue kazoo and got it on my dry brush and just went back over all of the areas that I hit with the pale blue. And this just kind of, you know, made the blue a little more rich but it also dimmed it down so it wasn't as white because it kind of made him look like a very old man beast. And I didn't want it to look that way. This is a prime example of when you think you're done with an area and then after a while of painting other things, you really see it and you're just not happy with it. Mistakes happen along the way and you just do what you gotta do to course correct. So adding this extra little blue on top of it didn't hurt anything and it turned out really good and I was glad that I made that decision. Using the Admiral Blue for the front right here of the costume. Alright so I have this electric blue that I'm going to get a little bit on my dry brush and mix it in with the other blue that I was doing and ever so slightly just stroke it from the bottom just to get some of those raised ridges. So that gave me some of the highlighting edges that I wanted on just this middle blue part right here. Now to move on to the black. So the black is going to be next. Then we're going to be moving on to the yellow X. For the teeth, I'm going to use Game Color Bone White because I don't want it a brilliant white. I want it kind of a muted, and this does really good for that purpose. All right, so I'm going to use a soft tone wash on the teeth. And I did a little bit on the eyes as well to dim them down. So now you can see a little more of that definition. So for the X, I was heavily debating whether I should go with yellow or a gold. And I just, I don't know. I think gold is going to make this thing stand out like crazy because there's so many tones that are the same and it's dark. And this is just going to make it go bam and I that's what I want so I am going to go ahead and paint all of the X and his collar gold now when it comes to his belt that I think I'm going to do gray with maybe like gold or silver I'll, I'll we'll see about that when it comes to the edges of the pants and things like that 
that I think I want to do red because obviously the emblem on his chest has to be red. Like it just has to be. So I might do these edges of the costume in like a really bold red to really stand out. But for right now, the next step is going to be doing this polished gold game color. All right. I think the gold was the right decision. It looks amazing. Okay, so I've got all the gold done. It's looking great. Now I'm going to get the trim of the costume in this pure red from Army Painter. <laughs> Okay, so now I have all the red done on the hands and all the trim and the X. The last thing I have here is the belt because everything else is done. So let's get started on this belt. So I'm just gonna go with this Necromancer cloak. It's just a really dark gray. And I'm going to paint the actual belt that. Then I'm gonna use the silver on the actual buckle. Okay, so I've got the emblem painted red because I want the background to be red and then the X is going to be the silver. And I'm going to go ahead and use this gun metal from the army painter. Okay, so he is good to go. So now all we have left is the assembly and glue this guy together. So go ahead and get my base that I actually did in a previous video and then I just got to get my glue out. All right, one last thing that I do before I glue up some of these more detailed models that obviously take a whole lot more time is I actually want to go over the entire model in every angle and really look at it to make sure that I didn't miss any spots or if there's something that really needed it that I didn't do and just to make absolute sure. Because the worst thing is, is when you've actually spent so many hours on painting something and you glue it together and you realized, oh crap, I missed a spot and now how am I going to get a paintbrush there? So that's all I really do is just make sure everything looks good. And with this, I think we are pretty solid. Everything looks solid and painted well. All right, so now we start the gluing process. I always like to start at the torso and work my way out. So I'm gonna be just using this uh, super glue gel from Gorilla Glue. All right, so now he's all glued together. This was such a fun model to paint and the project I feel like it just turned out amazing. I could not be more happy with how it turned out. I did spend a lot more time on this than I usually do for painting my 3D models, but I mean every single second paid off. In total, it took me about four or five days to actually get this done. But I mean, just look at it. The results speak for itself. And all of this was done with basic techniques and just a steady hand because there were some spots that were very hard to get to. If you like this video today, hit that subscribe button so you see all of my videos that are going to be coming out in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.